How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. I'm doing more of a video game news video this week because there's just this really particular case that I think is very interesting, but more than anything very frustrating. I think it's important for a lot of people to hear this story, and I just wanted to share my personal take on things and help put that information out there. The boys over on the Let's Play channel Spicy Waffle made a tweet the other day describing this email they had received from the developers of Hell Hunt a Western Battle Royale. This somewhat threatening message was asking them to take down a video they had done on a different game, also known as Hell Hunt. They indicated that if this content was not removed from their channel, they would be receiving a copyright strike. Now, to be clear, the developer of this retro shooter FPS Hell Hunt, T19, is essentially a non-participant in this. They're really just a victim of someone else's shady practices. They've done nothing to poke the bear, are seemingly very innocent in this situation, and would have been learning about it at the same time as everyone else. This idea of a developer going after content creators specifically to try and take down things unrelated to a game they're working on simply for sharing a name is unprecedented. There are a thousand examples out there of companies, and specifically video game developers, protecting their copyrights and trademarks. But usually those are resolved quite quietly, behind closed doors, and don't really affect anyone except those two parties. Suddenly YouTubers are the middlemen in this, and being attacked in a way that I don't think has been seen before. And thanks to YouTube's extremely broken copyright protection system, it's very easy for others to abuse that and have videos taken down that they have no claim over, and YouTubers are left with little to no recourse to protect themselves. It is illegal to take advantage of the system, you cannot file false copyright claims, Yet it happens all the time, and it never seems to amount to more than a slap on the wrist. Here's an example of what a positive trademark dispute looks like. A couple years back, Armor Games and the developer Script Welder had released Don't Escape Four Days in a Wasteland. In a very respectful and amicable exchange, In Exile requested that Four Days in a Wasteland be changed to something that avoided confusion with their revitalized Wasteland series. It's something that they're actively building on and would want to protect. Holding on to your trademark is important. If you don't contest these things and let them begin to slip away, you're threatening the validity of your hold on that trademark. As they try to lift back up this classic series, if there are a dozen other games with Wasteland in their title, it's very hard to definitively say that Wasteland is your sole trademark. There might be things like a Wasteland clothing brand or a local local shop in a, a city of yours, but those aren't going to compete with a video game. Two video games both having Wasteland in the title, well, that's more likely for consumers to confuse. In this case, Don't Escape is the important part of that title. Wasteland was unique to the fourth game, it's not particularly crucial to the titling of the full series. So they agreed to change it to Don't Escape, Four Days to Survive. No harm, no foul, nobody's any worse off, both get to coexist fully happily and without involving anyone other than those two parties. Then we have the other side of trademark, where companies are much more malicious, threatening, and aggressive. There are examples like King trying to trademark Candy, or the Fine Bros trying to trademark React. Simple, generic, common words that have thousands of applications that they tried to blanket trademark in every possible realm of possibilities. They wanted to erase all other instances of anything being called either Candy or React so that they could have the sole claim and stamp them out and firmly plant their flag in this empire that they're trying to build? The reactions to both were extremely averse. Luckily, neither of them were able to secure those trademarks. They wanted to strike down any creators, games, or media using those words to carve out a nice non-competitive space for themselves. It's okay to protect your trademark. It's not okay to knock out a few teeth. Now, while reading up on this to make sure I kind of had my facts straight, I learned a little bit about intellectual property that I was never quite certain on and thought would be worth sharing to give some context. A trademark typically protects brands and logos used on goods and services. A copyright protects an artistic or literary work. And a patent protects an invention, which won't really be relevant here today. Copyright is unique and interesting in that it automatically comes into effect at the time of creation. For example, when I was a teenager, I created a game called Pirate Launch. In that time, I technically held a copyright over that game, other people cannot legally share that game around and claim it as their own. But others are free to copy it and share it on their website with proper attribution, and there's no qualms there. Now, if someone else had come out with a game called Pirate Launch 10 years later, I can't do anything to sue over that or protect myself because I never registered anything or took action to claim it as my own. 
<laughs> Thank you for the interruption. It is that tangible creation, the game itself, that is being protected. Trademarks have much more to do with branding, and it's something you have to file for and be granted. Names, slogans, and logos can all be trademarked. Now, you can't file for a trademark for a game that's already trademarked. I can't file for a trademark on the game title Five Nights at Freddy's, that already exists. But back at the time when they would have made that filing, there would have been a representative on the government side looking through things and ensuring that yes, this is a unique title that you have created and it's unlikely to be confused with anything else. There's a screening and due diligence there before you can be granted a trademark. There is some human error here. Interestingly, you have to file separate trademarks for a bunch of different things. Having the trademark on a video game is one thing, but when it comes to merchandise and books and movies and all other forms, you would have to file separate trademarks for each of those. Here's a quick example I could give. When Nintendo created the Nintendo Switch, they have a patent on the physical console. They have a trademark on Nintendo, Switch, and the slogan, Switch and Play. And when you come out with new generations of things, they would need a new patent on the Switch Lite and they would need a new trademark on Switch Lite. They would have copyrights on the website and any commercials or advertisements related to the product. Filing for a trademark requires either proof of use or proof of intended use. They call this your basis for filing. These need to be well documented and thoroughly itemized. You can't just say, I'm gonna make a game. You have to prove that you have the ability to do so, that you have a team behind you, that you have some early proofs of concept, you need to show that this will actually come to fruition. What are you selling? When, where, why, how, all of that. Through that concept of use, I can't file a trademark on a bunch of random nothings simply to squat on those rights. One, it's a waste of money as you have to pay to file for a trademark, but that application is going to be denied because you have no provable intended use. When you're looking to protect the mark of your trade, and yes, that's where the name comes from, you have to show a demonstrable use in commerce or intent to use. Even if you haven't created a game, if you have a bunch of concept art out there, a website, and several things that are branded, you're putting it out there and showing that you are staking a claim on that name, and it's something you intend to create and use. You similarly can't use that to squat on a trademark claim. You can't design 300 fake logos for games you're never intending to make, and splash pages, and DeviantArt, Tumblr, itch pages, anything and everything like that, because you have to show that you're actively working on this product. If you drew up a logo three years years ago and have literally never done anything with it again, it doesn't matter that you were the first one to call something that if you never followed through with it. Both of these hell hunts would be looking at use in commerce. They both featured the name and their own unique logos in various pieces of advertising and promotional material. Through my own research, T19's game appears to be the first of the two to use the title Hell Hunt. It doesn't matter how long ago they started the game, or when they first tweeted out the words Hell Hunt. What we're concerned with are instances of them using the title and the logo directly tied to promotional material or advertising. In this case, on December 25th, 2019, they released a trailer for their game Hell Hunt on a YouTube channel called Hell Hunt, and at the end of the YouTube trailer, there is a giant logo that says Hell Hunt. An interesting example based on a game that I've shown off in the channel before, the first ever trailer for what eventually became known as My Friend Pedro was originally titled Blacklist. It doesn't matter now that they've changed the title of that YouTube video to be My Name is Pedro original trailer or anything like that. Everything within that trailer that cannot be edited still says Blacklist. That would be a poor claim. It doesn't prove anything. It's something that can be edited and altered. The video itself cannot be. So in case anyone was wondering if this YouTube channel or title of the video had been changed after the fact, it doesn't matter because it's proven within the video that they were using the title and have a logo for Hell Hunt. Now on the other hand, we have this allegedly offending party Cat Code Games. They're the ones threatening the DMCA takedown notices to content creators on YouTube. They have the Hell Hunt domain, they have Hell Hunt on Steam, their YouTube channel is Play Hell Hunt, their Twitter is Play Hell Hunt, it's splattered all over the place. Interestingly on Steam, they list it with Hell Hunt TM, we'll get into that in a minute. The domain name Hell Hunt was registered on January 8th, a couple weeks after that retro shooter trailer. The first use of the name in any promotional material on their Twitter account comes on January 28th. Up until then, they were known as Wanted in Hell and had the username Play Wanted. Everything since then now says Hell Hunt and it's at Play Hell Hunt. 
I have to suspect that something was going on here. The game has gone from being called Wanted Dead Men Walking to just Wanted to Wanted in Hell, now to Hell Hunt. If that is the case, you'd think they would have learned the importance of vetting a name for any potential conflicts. Having a domain name is one thing, you can assign a specific date to that. Everything like the Twitter, Steam, and Discord pages have all had their names changed. It's all just in an effort to aggressively plant that flag, and essentially gaslight everyone into thinking that they've been hell hunt all along. I'm actually stunned they haven't wiped their Twitter page. Apparently, they've been in such a rush to deal with all this that the project's producer, lead programmer, and head of Cat Code Games still hasn't even updated his Twitter banner with a new official title six months later. I don't know specifically what motivated a name change, I'm not sure if someone with their own claim on something like Wanted came after them, or if they just decided they wanted a new title. Either one is fine, it's their decision to change their name. But I think the reason that all of this is suddenly coming up, six months after the fact, is that back when they first changed their name at the beginning of the year, they didn't realize they had been beaten to the punch. Alpha Beta Gamer featured that original Hell Hunt in an article and video of theirs at the end of May. This leads to a bunch of exposure, some prominent videos, people tweeting about it, talking about it, sharing it around. Anytime you search on YouTube, this game is going to be the first that comes up. Great exposure for T19. Bad news for Cat Code Games, who presumably didn't realize that the name had already been in use. Less than two weeks later, Cat Code Games is out there filing for a trademark of Hell Hunt on June 12th. They're trying to snake away that name, despite appearing to have a later claim to it. I also think this is why it's interesting that they put Hell Hunt TM on their Steam splash page because they have only filed for a trademark. They have not yet been granted it. But when I went looking into this, that C logo that you see next to things is very specific, very important. You have to earn that through filing and being granted a copyright. Interestingly, the TM is a symbol that has no legal meaning. You can use the symbol on any mark that your company uses without registering it. The most common use of the TM symbol is on a new phrase, logo, word, or design that a company plans to register through the USPTO. But as mentioned, there is no legal protection when using TM. This little R you see next to things stands for registered trademark. That is legal and at the federal level. TM means nothing. It's basically like calling dibs. Beginning to use this in association with your product can grant you common law trademarks. You're declaring ownership without legally filing for it. By staking this claim, other people in the same geographic region cannot also claim a common law trademark. Here it is first come first serve. But in a digital space, same geographic area doesn't really matter. And a official registered trademark would trump a common law trademark. This would be important if you started your own horror-themed escape rooms titled Hell Hunt, and you want to make sure that no one else in your city starts something called Hell Hunt that could be easily confused with your business. Throwing the TM on the end of their logo here doesn't really count for much. I was ready to be all accusatory, like, oh, this is illegal. <laughs> Turns out it doesn't mean anything. I can put TM at the end of two left thumbs, and it doesn't matter. It's not the nail in the coffin that I thought it would be, but it's clearly this company trying to signal to everyone out there, we are Hell Hunt. Presumably, who's ever put in charge of this application will do their due diligence, and hopefully they are denied by the fact that they were second to be using the name. When a trademark is filed, there is a period of opposition. This hasn't yet been entered for Hell Hunt, but when it does, T19 will have the option to oppose that claim if they so choose. Based on a few examples I personally looked at, it looks like it takes months to reach that stage. We probably won't see anything on that until October, maybe November. And the application may be denied before it even reaches that stage. T19's earlier titling date, a trailer from 2019, various publications and blog posts, boatloads of YouTube videos, and a publicly playable demo should all go a long way to strengthen that claim. This is an outside perspective, but based on what I'm seeing, Cat Code Games realized they made a mistake, jumped the gun filing for their website, retitling the game, going through the process of rebranding and re-advertising this new title, only to realize it already existed, and in a huge bitch move, went after YouTubers? They have been emailing anyone on YouTube who has a video on the other Hell Hunt game, providing them with a list of reasons of why it's illegal and the video needs to be taken down. Hello, insert username here. I'm the producer for a game titled Hell Hunt in development by Cat Code Games LLC. A video on your channel showcases a game titled Hell Hunt here. Link provided. Cat Code Games has copyright and trademark claim to the title Hell Hunt for downloadable games. Not true. 
Hell Hunt name legal registrations filed with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for the class of downloadable software and 1B basis. Yes, that is true. They have filed the claims. That doesn't mean anything yet. You cannot enforce that. They then list as many things as they can to prove that they own and use this name. Hell Hunt on Steam, hellhunt.com domain, hellhunt.net domain. Hellhunt Official Discord, Play Hellhunt YouTube, Play Hellhunt Twitter, Play Hellhunt Twitch, Hellhunt Logo, HH Icon GIF Still. I mean, yeah, these are the sort of things that you should have put in your trademark application, and presumably did. Doesn't mean jack shit to a content creator. Please remove all written or spoken mentions of the title Hellhunt from your content, or remove this video entirely so there's no further customer confusion. That goes back to the idea of Wasteland being used in two games. That's a legitimate basis for contesting something when dealing with trademarks. You want customers to know specifically what they're getting. That has no bearing on a YouTuber. If they own the trademark, they should be filing an official takedown to the other developer. I'm a developer myself and like to have good relationships with content creators and showcase games like you. So this is a courtesy email to avoid giving your channel strikes with YouTube's DMCA claim system. I apologize for affecting your content, but it must be done to protect our team's four years of development work on our title. Thank you for understanding. It's also interesting that they say four years. Their Twitter account was created at the beginning of 2018, specifically claiming, and we're off, as if that were the beginning. Maybe they worked on the game behind closed doors before then. I don't want to get too into it, but it's just them trying to play the sympathy card. Oh, we've been working on it for four years. There are so many things wrong with this email. Sending a threatening email attempting to strong arm someone to remove content is against YouTube's terms of service. I shouldn't have to explain why. They are using their trademark application as grounds to get YouTubers to back down when the trademark filing itself does not count for anything. I can apply for a trademark on Markiplier. I can't go tell him to delete his channel. It has not been legally decided if you will be granted that trademark. Even if they did have the trademark, playing a game that infringes on that trademark is not the fault of the content creator. Trademarks are brands, logos, and slogans. So maybe with Hell Hunt in the title of the video, they could try to come at you for that? But that title is matched to the copyrighted, not trademarked material in the video. And even if these developers had been granted granted the copyright, they cannot issue a copyright claim against the video because it's not their video game. Remember how copyrighted material is things that you create surrounding that, like commercials and advertisements? Cat Code has no grounds here to make a copyright or trademark claim. So not only are they issuing these threats, but if they were to follow through with that threat, they would be illegally abusing the DMCA takedown system by filing a false copyright claim. And with that, we're still not even really addressing fair use, which is a whole other can of worms that we're not going to get into right now. I get the receiving a professionally written email with things thrown all around about patent offices, trademarks, copyrights, takedown notices, copyright strikes can be really terrifying. Again, YouTubers do not have a lot of options to protect themselves. It's easier to try and avoid those conflicts to begin with. What appears to be happening here is cat code games fucked up. They're already paying for this domain, they completely changed how they're advertising things with new logos and branding, but they know that their claim on that trademark is weak. They are trying to strengthen it by erasing as much content on the other Hell Hunt as possible. So maybe by the time their claim is actually looked at, all these YouTube videos and Alpha Beta Gamer posts and itch pages and everything else is gone, leaving their game as the only viable option to be granted that trademark. I've never seen anything like this, and if it's true, it's one of the biggest asshole moves out there. You're stealing the title of another game and basing that on a lie. Allegedly. I hate that in this email they claim to be these friendly developers, oh we advocate for content creators, we are ourselves, while also going for the jugular. You can't play the woe is us card while also trying to fuck over everyone. If you've received this email, you do not have to take down your video. I am not a lawyer, so please feel free to disregard my advice. But my belief is that if anything, you should not only keep up your video, but promote the hell out of it. We could all work together to help promote and support T19's claim to the title Hell Hunt. I'll have a link to that free demo down below. Play it, share it, like it, leave a review, do whatever you want to do. They don't deserve to have their hard work developing, promoting, and sharing this game to be erased just because someone else didn't do a thorough enough Google to determine that this title was already being used. And to be clear, the best way to move forward with any of this is just peacefully supporting T19 and essentially ignoring this other game. They can be rude and threatening if they want. There's no reason to be rude back, no need for a witch hunt. There's absolutely room for this to be resolved quietly. It was their mistake to escalate it and make it a loud, big, obnoxious deal, but now we can quietly suppress things and hopefully move forward from it. 
this incident and story just totally rubbed me the wrong way. I'm not a fan of bullies of any form, and I thought it would be worth sharing the apparent story, as well as doing a little bit to inform others about trademark and copyright laws. Both game developers and YouTubers, hopefully. It's been informative for myself as well. I don't intend to do videos like this too often, but when something really gets the blood boiling, then I just want to let it all out. So thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.